today's uh, keynote speaker, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Lin Jian, and his uh, topic uh, will be leverage transparent comp compression to improve the software performance and storage efficiency. And Dr. Jian is a performance architect in Scaleflux, and he received his uh, bachelor and the master degree from uh, Zhejiang University, uh, and uh, he also received his PhD degree in uh, Polytech uh, Institute in year 2015. And after that, he has been working in uh, Scaleflux, uh, where he his work focused on the development and application of computing computational storage. And today, his talk is going to talk about uh, how to have the transparent compression in the SSD. So please join me. Welcome in uh, our keynote speaker, uh, uh, Dr. Jen. Thank Professor Chang for the introduction. And my name is Lin Zheng from Skillbox. And the talk today we want to talk about is leverage transparent compression to improve software performance and storage efficiency. So in this talk, in this talk, we will first go through the concept of Transparent compression in both host based and device based. And then we will discuss the advantages of device based transparent compression over the host based transparent compression. And then we will use two case studies to show how transparent compression can be used to reduce red amplification in bit tray based relational phase and how we can use it to improve the efficiency of software elastic grid, uh, following elastic grid. Okay, let's first take a look at the concept of transparent compression. Generally, there are two categories for transparent compression, including the host-based and device-based. For the host-based transparent compression, the compression functionality is really handled by the Linux software. And the block pair is responsible for the data compression and decompression, and also needs to handle the storage management before and after the compression. All the up level softwares like MySQL, PostgreSQL, or MongoDB do not have a sense that data is compressed. So, this is why it is called transparent compression. And in this category, the compression is usually handled by the CPU, so its efficiency is not that high enough. Uh, on the other hand, it has another drawback, that is, it cannot use volume storage. This is because it cannot arrange the compressed data blocks byte by byte inside the storage. Uh, let's use this figure, for example, suppose the data block A and B they have high compression ratio and they can be placed in a single 4K sector. But the state block C do not have a such high compression ratio. So the left space in this sector cannot hold the block C. So we have to choose a new sector for to stop the data block C. So there will be many holes inside the digital storage space. So generally, the four drawbacks of host-based transparent compression are listed below. Usually, it has longer latency and lower else because the compression is handled by CPU, and of course, it will consume more CPU resource. And it has less stop saving because there are many holes in the physical stuff space, and the scalability is not that good because. Uh, the compression and decompression bandwidth cannot scale very well with the number of CPU cores. We know that many CPU cores have independent L1 and L2 cache, but they shell L3 and uh, D1. So the compression bandwidth cannot scale very well. The other category is device based transparent compression. Instead of doing compression in the Linux block layer, now the compression is performed inside the storage devices. 
So all the up levels do not have a sense that it is unrest. Uh, usually in this category, we use dedicated hardware to accelerate compression algorithm. So the bandwidth is high and the latency is low. Besides, we do not use CPU for compression, so it has zero host CPU usage. And it can save more storage because in device based transparent compression, we can arrange compressed data blocks byte by byte inside the storage device. And it has very good scalability because when we add more parts to the system, the compression and decompression bandwidth will scale very well. Uh, let's take a, a quick look at an example of device based um, transparent compression. Here we use Scale Black CSD 2000 as an uh, example. CSD 2000 is the second generation product of Scale Black. And it has also based FTL to manage the post compression, data compression. And at the same time, it has an FPGA based controller to do the built in transparent compression. And the compression is performed for a 45 block size. And this compression capability is equivalent to EZ level 6. The compression bandwidth is larger than 2 gigabytes per second. And the decompression bandwidth is larger than 2.8 gigabytes per second. And this figure shows the uh, ad hoc comparison of normal PCIe SSD and uh, CSD 2000 on different rate ratio. The horizontal axis uh, denotes the rate ratio in the workflow. The 100% rate ratio means the workflow is purely read, and uh, the 0% rate ratio means the uh, workflow is purely write. So, as we can see from this figure, with the rate ratio decreasing or the write ratio increasing, the performance gap between normal PCIe SSD and SSD 2000 is increasing. This is because when the data is compressible, we need less NAND bandwidth to read or write the data. So there will be less die confliction when the data is compressible for building transparent compression. So the message here we want to deliver is transparent compression improves the pure write and makes the workflow performance significantly due to less die completion. So we also do experiments to compile the performance between the host-based transparent compression and device-based transparent compression. They will still use the SD2000 as an target uh, SSD, and we use Linux VDO as an example of host-based transparent compression. Uh, Linux VDO is an open source block layer module, uh, which can be run on a central state platform. And it has two main functionalities, including decubitation and uh, compression. Uh, of course, in the test, we, uh, we only enable the compression part and disable the decubitation part. And in Linux VDO, the host CPU is responsible for the data compression, and this default algorithm is LV4 because LV4 is uh, much faster than DZ or ZV, although it has lower compression ratio. And Linux VDO actually references a wide range of host based transparent uh, solutions like uh, VM, VMware Design. So we also choose some online host files to evaluate the storage cost difference between these two transparent compression categories. Uh, let's take a look at the results.
是这一段吗？
it is unnecessary to use all logical blocker glasses in the style of device. And it's also unnecessary to fill each LBA or view the data. And this tells us that the high level software could intentionally waste the logical space to obtain additional gains. So in the following parts, we will use two case studies to illustrate how we can use improvisation to improve software performance. The first case is reduce the right amplification bitrate based relational database. And we use MySQL as the example of bitrate based database. And in this part, we will talk about three techniques, including uh, deterministic page shadowing, uh, localized page modification logging, and sparsely through logging. And in the second case, we will talk about a software elastic rate. We will talk about the realization of rate level conversion and also evaluate performance and tail latency improvement. Uh, so before talking about how to reduce the right amplification bitrate based relational database, let's first take a look at where the tra right traffic comes from in MySQL. Generally, there are four main writers in MySQL, including the bin log on the server side, we do log double the buffer and the big page flash on the storage in a DB side. Here we want to focus on the storage in a DB side because uh, they occupy the most part of the write. And the redo log is used to flash data, log data from in manual redo log buffer to storage. It's used to ensure the transaction honesty and isolation. The double the buffer is used to is uh, used to flash up to write to avoid a partial page write issue and ensure they write honestly in case of power failure. And the third page flash is to flash data from in memory cache to storage for dirty pages to make room for new coming pages. So the first technique we want to talk about is deterministic page sharing. Uh, this technique is used to reduce the write overhead of double write buffer. Uh, we know that there are only two categories to ensure they write honestly, including the generally and the copy on write. Uh, double write buffer is an example of generally, and the uh, page shadowing is an example of copy on write. But in traditional page shadowing, uh, we need to dynamically allocate the start space of each to be flashed page. And which will lead to write overhead of persisting page table and complex storage management. But with simple version or with device trans based transparent compression, we can solve this problem using so called deterministic page sharing technique. The details are like this. Uh, with simple version of SSD, we expand the LBA space. And then direct allocated two consecutive slots for each data page. Remember, we only have one slot for one page in traditional practice. Uh, these two slots will be used to store the up to date data page alternatively. Let's use this figure. For example, suppose the current up to date data image is stored in slot one. And at time T1, we want to flash a newer version of this page. And this newer version will be right to slot zero. And then at time T2, we will send the print command to slot one. So that slot one will not consume too much physical space in the device. And at time T3, a newer version will be flashed again, and it will be flashed to slot one. And then at time T4, we will send the print command to slot zero. So we can see that these two slots will be used to store the latest data page alternatively. And besides, we can use a simple bin map in the memory to track the position of each up-to-date page. So with simple provisioning property, we can implement the atomic write property at zero write amplification. So this will directly reduce the write amplification of MySQL almost by half. So the second technique we want to talk about is localized page modification logging. And this is used to 
reduce the uh, rough overhead of building pitch production. The idea is very simple. We want to log the modification instead of writing the entire page. And actually, this idea has been uh, proposed for a long time, but it is not used in practice. This is because there are two main problems for this idea. The first one is 4K by 12 bytes, which is not much at all. And we create this size. We know that in the first place, the default page uh, keyboard page size is 8K, and in my sequel, the default page size is 16K. But in current SSG, the smallest size I hold up is 4K. So the fork is not much smaller than 8K or 16K. Uh, another problem is that the allocation and management of the page modification allowing space is complex. So, in theory, it is possible, but in practice, no one used it. But with building just time compression, we can naturally solve these two problems at once. <laughs> uh, the idea is that we expand the LB performance and uh, uh, use additional 4K logging space for each data page. So now, if the original data page size is 16K, it will be expanded to 20K, and we use additional 4K to uh, store the modifications. We call these modifications dollars. So the dollars are recovered and recovered in the logging space, and the unused part in the logging space will be tied with zero. Since we have built-in transparent compression, this tag zero will be almost compressed away. So they will not consume too much physical space as we expected. To further, to further simplify the implementation, we can partition each data page into multiple segments. And we only record the modified segments in the logging space. So suppose a data page is divided into k segments denoted as pm1 to pmk. And in one modification, the first, the third, and the last, last uh, segment have been changed. So we only need to record pm1, pm3, and pmk in the long space. And the left part in the long space is kind of there. So in this way, we use expanded our data space to uh, record a localized page modification log, and we also use building compression to compress away the page there. So the overall storage cost is almost the same as the original practice. The third technique we want to talk about is faster to logging. And this is used to reduce the right overhead of redo log flash. So there are really two categories for redo log flash, uh, including redo log flash per commit and uh, redo log flash uh, per uh, predefined time interval. So in redo log flash per commit, we have uh, higher data security because uh, the log flash per commit and we do not suffer the data loss in the case of power failure. But when the when we flash the redo log at a certain time interval, we may suffer the data loss in case of power failure. But what we have what we gain is the performance improvement. So in many scenarios we have to use the uh, redo log flash per commit policy to ensure the data security. This technique is based on such observation. Uh, since uh, usually each redo log is much less than 4K by, but when we want to flash the log, the minimum IO block size is 4K by 4 SSD. So at time T1, when we want to flash our one log, we flash it to our A1.
，影响你话筒不用了。呃，室室内不用话，不用影响的，室内不用影响。好，我就上了。So at time t two, we will want to flash L two log. It has to be combined with L one, and still write to L one because both L one and L two are small. And at time t three, we want to flash L three. It has to be combined with L one and L two, and both all of them are flashed again to L one. So this we can see that in this practice, the L one is actually. Three, three times and L2 is actually two times, written two times. So this is the best option we can have for normal SSD because to save space we have to compact the log very tight in the review log space. But with thin progressing, we can expand the LV space and intentionally waste the logical space to a lower log file amplification. And the idea is also very simple. We just flash L1. Mid way we step up titles here. Since we have built in transformation, all these zeros will be compressed away, and only L1, L2, and L3 will be. Written to the plan only once. So in this way, we can effectively reduce uh, the right time duration of the two log flash. So how these three techniques could help us to reduce the right time duration? We do some experiments still with SSD 2000 as the target SSD, and we also use. Log flash probe minutes and log flash probe needs two policies to evaluate the comparison. And this figure shows. So. So this figure shows the comparison result uh, under. Of red amplification on the different record size. We use two record size, uh, including 128 bytes uh, and uh, 32 bytes. And we also use uh, two different setting size. Remember, we use setting size for a localized page modification logging technique. Uh, two setting size are uh, 128 bytes and 256 bytes. We denote our optimized version of B-tree as B minus three. And at the same time, we use baseline B-tree, B-tree based well tiger, and uh, LF and tree based drops DB as competitors. And from this two figure, we can see that when we reduce the record size, the amplification amplifi will be increased. But uh, for our B minus tree, its red amplification is smaller than baseline B3, while Tiger and, and also could be smaller than the Rocks DB. So this is uh, contrary to our intuition because more customers are using LSM3 based Rocks DB because they believe that the LSM3 has better red amplification than B3. So our results show that this is not necessarily the case. And we, uh, we also evaluate the red amplification on the log flash per commit policy. Although the red amplification is uh, a little bit larger than previous two figures, but the red amplification trend is the same. Is the same. So what the message we want to deliver here is, with building transparent compression and software optimizations, it is possible for B tree based database to have comparable or even better write application than LSM tree based database. We also evaluate the uh, performance uh, apart from the uh, write application reduction. And for the uh, 
performance part we evaluate the random quantum rate and uh, random write cases. And uh, from these two figures, we can see that for random quantum rate, our B minus tree almost delivers the same performance as RocksDB and a little bit worse than baseline BigQuery and the Wild Tiger. Uh, this is because we use uh, logging space to record the uh, page modifications and we need to recover the page to read the log, uh, to read the record. So that we, uh, it, which causes additional overhead. But for run write, our B minus tree has much improvement uh, compared with baseline B tree and Wild Tiger. And uh, actually, it's better than RocksDB also. This is because we use about three mentioned techniques to reduce the rat amplification, which can be directly translated into the uh, performance. The second case study is software elastic RAID. And we all know about RAID. RAID is uh, a perfect example of simplest ideas of what's working best. And we know some common use related configurations like RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, and RAID 10. Sometimes we, sometimes we call RAID 10 RAID 1 0. Different RAID configurations have different trade-offs. And in current practice, uh, users have to choose, uh, usually have to choose one specific RAID configuration and then stick to it after deliberating the pros and cons of different options. And in last night, the HP has developed an auto RAID product in which they divide the RAID level into uh, RAID hierarchy into two levels, including RAID 5 and RAID 10. The RAID 5 region uh, is used to store the inactive data, and the RAID 10 region is used to store the active data. We know that RAID 5 has better storage efficiency for RAID 10, but its performance is worse. So by dividing the read hierarchy into two levels, uh, we want to both obtain uh, the storage efficiency of read 5 and performance efficiency of read 10. But this product faces three problems, including we need to dynamically vary the data temperature, uh, which means we need to uh, identify which data is hot and which data is cold. And this is a complex work. And another one is we have to treat off user storage capacity and performance. And third is, in this practice, we have complicated management tasks, and uh, it also uses much CPU and DRAM resource. But in actual world, data is usually compressible. So it is beneficial for us to explore runtime data compressibility to dynamically convert the rate configuration between rate 5 and rate 10. When the data compressibility is not that good, we will use rate 5, rate 5 to stop data. And with the data compressibility become better and better, we will gradually use rate 10 to replace rate 5. But then we encounter a problem that who is responsible for the compression? Here, let's know the CPU-based software compression because the uh, efficiency is low. We only talk about hardware accelerators. For hardware accelerators, we have three options. The first one is dedicated compression acceleration curve, like Intel QAT curve. And the second is we can use compression and decompression engine in uh, the read curve. And the third one is using built-in transparent compression. So when we use the first two options, it is similar to host-based transparent compression, and we still have to face the storage, the storage management task for uh, uh, similar to the host-based transparent compression. And that might be many holes in the physical space. A possible solution to alleviate this problem is that uh, we use software, uh, read software to hand zero to make each data block in our data scrap aligned and uh, then upload the storage management into SSDs. So now 
the software in SSP is responsible to identify which are packed there and then move it away and then use the IGI FPL to manage the before and after data size. But a better solution is to use built-in transparent compression. And in this and in this way, the app layer does not to handle compression and data management at all. We just expand the RPA space and leave the compression and the storage management task uh, into SSDs. So this is the basic idea how we can implement the dynamic conversion to require and return. The idea is very similar to our pre-mentioned deterministic case shadowing. With a uh, thin provisioning property, we expand the LBA, for, uh, LBA space and then directly allocate two consecutive slots for each data strap. And when the compressibility is not that good, we use grid five configuration and send trip and trim command to the other slot. And when the data compressibility is good, we will change it to grid ten and write the data two times. So we can see the same is the idea is similar to the previous mentioned deterministic with shadow. Uh, with building transparent compression, it's also possible for us to simultaneously reduce the storage cost and realize the elastic weight. Uh, suppose we have 40 terabyte, 4 terabyte SSD, and then we expand this uh, physical space to 16 terabytes logical space. And we can use this five all the way down until the compression ratio reaches 2 to 1. And when the compression ratio is better than 2 to 1, we gradually use with 10 to replace with 5. So in this way, we can store two times the data volume at the original physical space. And uh, we can also enjoy the performance benefit of with 10 if our data compatibility is better. And we implement the prototype of our elastic braid and we uh, dynamically change, change the configuration between read 5 and read 10. Again, we use the SD2000 as the target SSD. And uh, below are the results. We first evaluate the uh, performance and care latency uh, using uncompressed data. And the baseline of read configuration is three plus one SSDs. And we, we also choose Linux MD and uh, Radiax as the competitors. And Radiax is the leading edge software and RAID product. And from this figure, we can see that our E rate can deliver 11 times higher IOPS and four times shorter 99% tail latency compared with the Linux MD and could deliver 1.4 times higher IOPS and four times shorter 99 send the tail latency compared with Radiax. Uh, we also evaluate uh, the performance on different return percentage. And we use FIO 4K random write uh, uh, as the tester case. And we also evaluate the 4K random rate performance on the one SSD failure. And the left figure shows the IOPS on the different return percentage. And we can see that as expected when the percentage increases from 0% to 100%, and the IOPS will improve more than 50%. And for the 4K random rate performance, and the, uh, from 0% to 100% return percentage, the performance will also increase more than 50%, and the tail latency will decrease about uh, 75%. Okay, we go to the component and we talk about the concept of transparent compression uh, and we discuss the advantages of device-based transparent compression over host-based transparent compression in terms of performance, storage cost, complexity. And we also use two case studies to show that device-based transparent compression bring us new opportunities for system level software design. 
and we talk about three techniques uh, for the operations on relational database to improve the rapid amplification performance. And we also talk about how to implement a elastic rate to improve performance and calculations. Of course, uh, we expect more work to be done in the community. Okay, that's all my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your excellent talk. And uh, there's, uh, is there any question? You can post uh, your question on the uh, dialogue or you can speak up to uh, raise your question. Uh, now we have one uh, posted question. The question is that, uh, does a skill flask consider apply CSD to general purpose computation? And what's the challenge of the extending CSD to all application scenarios? Uh, generally, the, uh, it's, it's first binary to the uh, application, but the, uh, the work we need to take care of is that we need to manage the physical storage space in the host. Uh, because data is compressed inside SSDs, and the host needs to know how much physical space is really used during the runtime uh, to, avoid, to avoid that the uh, the really the, the true physical space is not large enough to hold the incoming data. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other question? Okay, I have a follow-up question. Is that uh, uh, what's the next step or the next the application target of the scale flux? Because we find that uh, the computational storage device is very powerful but it also has some uh, uh, constraint on, in terms of application, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, uh, at the current stage, uh, we focus on the transparent compression because uh, it is very common. It is, can be used in many applications for some specific or some readers. Uh, in theory, we can use computational storage, storage drive to uh, Accelerate the uh, performance, but in practice, it is not. It needs to customize for each customer. Yes. So the market is not that wide enough. So uh, uh, this may be our further uh, <laughs> further steps, but in current stage, we only focus on first time compression. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Because uh, I'm I'm also interested in uh, what's the what kind of target. Uh, company or enterprise uh, of your, your of the scale flux because it seems that uh, I think many uh, uh, data center companies might be very interested in your, your solution. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, we have developed a prototype for database predicate push down, but we customize it for one specific customer. And this solution cannot be directly uh, pushed to other customers. And this is the experiment, but we believe that in the future, computational storage drive may have a larger market. Okay. So, I have a okay. question. Hello. Hello. Yes, please. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, for the second talk, uh, uh, you are talking about um, flexible rate design for rate 5 and the rate 10. Yeah. Uh, one, one, one question about the, the switch. Uh, between them, how to how did you how did you switch uh, switch uh, from from rate five to rate ten because uh, the compression ratio can be uh, can be changed during the runtime. So yes. maybe you, you need to change to uh, rate ten and then uh, for some time you need to change back. What is cost? What is the frequency? Okay. So can we turn to the slides? Yes. So this figure only shows the uh, basic idea of the conversion between rate five and rate ten, and we limit the granularity into each strap. So for each strap, uh, uh, because we have the compressibility of data inside the SSDs, we could determine when it can be or it should be. 
uh, do the conversion between grade five and grade 10. It's like one of the tasks. But in actually, uh, uh, we want it to be a product. We will not uh, limit the granularity into one strap. We may use a large granularity, uh, say, segment or a zone, uh, which might be uh, several megabytes size. So it's not, it's not a runtime conversion, it's a background conversion. But what is the cost? The, how many uh, costs for the transformation? Uh, the cost, the cost is that we may have uh, additional read and write, but actually, uh, although it is the uh, background task, we can also use the overall data compressibility to determine the uh, read configuration for incoming data. For example, if the overall uh, data compressibility is already very good, we can directly use the in, uh, return for incoming data. And if the data compatibility is not that good, we can use read five for incoming data. So this is the pre determined policy. So we can use both of them. Okay. To the goal. Okay. Uh, thank you. And I have another question is that what's your opinion about the traditional SSD as the interface and uh, the zone name space for the compute? a story device because nowadays the zone space are kind of uh zone space SSD are kind of very popular and a lot of people are talking about it. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, the uh, standard of PCIe and MME is also evolving, and the computational we also uh, have since the uh, computational storage drive uh, APIs and standards are established. Uh, but for current stage, I think a normal SSD still has a very good market because it also has uh, many new features and uh, uh, new uh, interfaces. Uh, so uh, I think the uh, some features uh, which we uh, think it should be uh, located in the computational storage domain now might be uh, located in the normal SSD domain in the future. So I think these two paths are not, uh, maybe have a trend to com converse. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any other question? Uh, okay, please allow me to have one more question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Professor, okay, the, please. Yeah, one of the question from Professor Chang. Um, I, I think another question is, um, uh, do you have any comments for for the computation SSD in this area, since ScareFlex has a totally different objective uh, compared with different uh, companies such as uh, uh, Samsung, you, you know, Smart, Smart SSD2 yeah. is, is coming and uh, something like this. Uh, do you have any comments? Uh, I think for current stage, the transparent compression seems to still have the largest market. And in the future, we are also developing some specific hardware IPs for uh, dedicated uh, computation acceleration. And uh, in the coming years, we may have we may see that we could have some demos on, on some applications to show the performance to performance benefits of computational storage. Thank you. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, I have another follow up question. Yeah, because uh, although this question is not about uh, about the, the, the price, the, the, the products, but I, I'm talking about the, the research uh, topic because nowadays many people yeah, talk, are talking about uh, processing memory, even processing in flash chips. And uh, what's your comment about this kind of technology that can be integrated with the computational storage in your device, I, I mean, what's your comment about this kind of technology? Whether it is it possible to integrate with the computational storage device in the future, or in your viewpoint, it's just a, 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 a research topic, not not very practical. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I can't say for sure, but uh, it seems to be uh, beautiful to uh, use these new techniques, but. Uh, I think there might be many uh, practical problems when we want to push it to the uh, 
to be your product and to the market. Uh, so I, uh, the, the trend for me is not very clear, and, but of course it now has a linear uh, value. Um, um, we see that Chris, uh, 3D cross point, we don't think uh, it could be, uh, but, uh, it could be a, a product uh, during exactly years ago, but uh, several years ago in China, Macron say, it's, say they have a product for, uh, for Pira. But now they have this paper with the PRAM uh, uh, pipeline. So the techniques are changing, but uh, uh, the trend may not very clear. Okay, thank you very much because the time is uh, is up. So let us uh, thank you for your excellent talk again. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Chang. Thank you, everyone. Hello, hello, Professor Chang. We have sign card. Okay.
uh, of, of, our, of, our, of our station. So he is this. In the following of our session, we have uh, four paper presentations. And uh, the first uh, speaker is uh, Tai Yuzhou. Uh, tai Yuzhou is a 30 year graduate student in the Department of Computer Science as the pioneer of vertical technology, advised by Professor uh, Ya, ya Junzhu. Uh, his main research interests include storage system, non volume memory, and uh, SSD. Uh, so the title of the presentation is Exploiting Multiple Error uh, Variations to Enhance Polar Code Efficiency on 3D, uh, on 3D Flash Memory. So let's welcome uh, Tai Yu Zhou. Sorry for the audience in online. We have some some trouble when sharing the screen. So we need uh, uh, maybe one minute.
Sorry for the late. Uh, hi, I'm Tai Zhou from Wuhan University of Technology. I'm gathered here to present our work Enhancing Protocol Efficiency on 3D Fast Memory by Exploring Multiple Error vari Variations. Uh, uh, my presentation is divided in four parts. And I'll start with the background and motivation. Uh, the basis of 3D fast memory. Uh, 3D fast memory is becoming the mainstream of solid state drives based on kernel fast memory. 3D fast memory can shop fast shell into vertically stacked structure. The figure shows below uh, is the physical organization of 3D fast memory. Uh, each kernel part or fast layer. The stacky layer are connected by cylindrical channels. And for each layer, there are multiple walk lines. For each walk line, uh, it contains multiple pages. For example, two fast pages for MLC fast or three fast pages for TLC fast. We use MLC as an example in this presentation. The two page in one walk line for upper pages and lower pages, which is made up of MSP and LSP respectively. We next describe the error characteristic of 3D fast memory. Uh, due to the manufacturing processing and physical structure in 3D fast memory, pages in different layers, we see this significant error rate variation, which are called interlayer error variation. This error variation stems from the cylindrical channels. Specifically, the top layer have larger diameter than the bottom layers. This asymmetric process size is the root cause of interlayer error variation. Uh, so in this table, uh, the wall, the wall bit error rate variation across different fast layer can large than six times. And the middle layer uh, shows the highest uh, RPR besides pages in the same walk lines also exhibit error variation, which are called intro walk line error variation. The error variation of multiple pages inside one walk line is mainly decided by the overlap case between adjacent voltage states. As so in this figure, there are two bits in one cell in MLC bus. The left bit is LSB. LSB and the uh, right bit is the MSB. For LSB, uh, the, the error will happen when the states 1, 0, and 0, 0 overlap. For MSB, error would happen in two cases the state 1, 1, and 1, 0 overlap, and uh, 0, 0, and uh, 0, 1 overlap. Therefore, upper pages will be more prone to error than lower page as so in the table. That's the basis of protocol. Protocol is a classes of linear codes. The key concept of protocol is polarization, which combines or space channel in the data part and error part. Uh, in polarization, it sort the quality of the channel and divided channel into reliable channels and unreliable channels. The reliable channel transmits information bits. The unreliable channel transmits useless data or frozen bit. In protocol, the part of information bits close to the frozen bit has the worst channel quality. And those data are more prone to and will significantly decrease the error correction capability of protocol. Those bits call, uh, call the important bits. Therefore, protocol has an even bit important. In protocol, 
uh, code weight is also an important parameter. For a protocol with code weights and k, n denotes the length of the uh, protocol. K denotes the length of the uh, of the information bits, and n minus k denotes the length of frozen bit. Protocol with lower code weight has higher error correction capability, but higher redundancy, which means more space overhead. In turn, high code weight has lower redundancy but lower error weight correction capability. Uh, we describe our motivation. The new error characteristic in three bus memory made the behavior of data errors more complicated, which introduced new challenges to data reliability. Meanwhile, protocol has an inherently important and must carefully determine the code weight. Therefore, two weeks, this two reasons made the practical performance of protocol in flash memory unknown. In this work, we aim at making protocol available and efficient in practical 3D flash memory. Uh, we first give an overview of our work. In this paper, we propose a variation aware protocol so as EYPC, we first give an overview of EYPC. EYPC consists of two key schema, which are embedded in the ECC module of the bus controller. The intra work line error aware data placement and the layer adaptive protocol design. Uh, the intra work line error aware data placement. As we mentioned before, a code way a core wall of protocol consists of information bits, important bits, and frozen bits. And the important bits are more prone to error. If they have higher reliability, the error correction capability of the protocol can be improved. Thus, important bits should have higher priority to be stored in more reliable positions. And also recall that the interval line variation in 3D flash memory which lower page are more reliable and uh, more reliable than other pages based on this two characters. The key idea of intro work line error aware data placement is that it stores important bits into lower pages. And due to the one shot programming, 3D fast memory program a work line at once. Therefore, in our design, multiple work line are uh, put into one wall line. Then we, we organize frozen bits, important bits, and information bits of these code walls to better fit in one wall line. We saw an example of the data placement scheme for 3D MLC flash. Here are four code walls of protocols with the same code weights. Before they are stored on the wall line, these code walls are firstly buffered in the page buffer to fill up uh, the size of a wall line. URPC then performs the reorganization operation. It places those important bits into the left view of the lower pages and frozen bits into the left view of the upper pages. Those information bits are placed in the rest space of the wall line. That's the uh, layer adaptive protocol design. So we report that protocol with lower code weights has higher error correction capability, however, higher redundancy. In turn, higher code weight has lower redundancy but lower error correction capability. What's more, different layer exhibit different rapid error weights. To balance the reliability and redundancy of protocol. We adaptively determine code weight for different layers by designing layer adaptive protocol. Uh, so in this figure, during the encoding process, URPC obtain the information of the targeted layer and we organize the protocol. Specifically, URPC only need to change or enlarge the length of information bit by converting some of them into frozen bits. Next, describe our evaluation. Uh, we simulate the encoding and decoding process of protocol. The error model based on 3D CT flash. 
We evaluate three methods, including the original polar code, the ERPC walleye, and the ERPC layer. We evaluate three matches, the UBR, which evaluate the probability of decoding failure. The induced P cycle evaluates the inducency of stream flash memory, and the redundancy overhead, which evaluates the size of available data space after using polar codes. Uh, we saw some results on evaluating ERPC walleye. This figure shows the uncorrectable bit and block error weight with increased P cycle in original PC and ERPC with different code weights. From the result, we have two observations. On one hand, the proposed ERPC can significantly improve the bit error correction capability in any code weights. Specifically, for given, for given UPER, ERPC tolerates more PD cycles. On the other hand, when the code weight changes, the improvement by ERPC is more obvious compared with the original PC. We can get similar observation on the Y figure, which shows our improvement on board, on, on board error correction capability. Uh, the sensitivity study. Uh, the last figure shows the comparison with original PC and URPC walleye under different number of important bits. As we can see, with the number of important bits increased, URPC walleye perform much better. This means that the impact of important bits on error correction capability is critical. The Y figure shows the comparison with original PC and URPC walleye under different code lengths. Because longer polar codes are more completely polarized during construction, with the code lengths increased, URPC walleye perform much better. The evaluation on URPC layer. We here shows the, analyze the trade-off between inductancy and redundancy. The inductancy evaluates the error correction capability of polar code, while redundancy evaluates the HR storage space span on polar code. Figure shows the result normalized to original PC with 0 0.88 code weight. From the left figure, we can find that URPC layer can reach to the same influence as original PC 0 0.88. From the Y figure, URPC has lower redundancy compared to the original PC 0 0.88 and only 20% higher than original PC 0 0.92. Therefore, URPC layer could reduce redundancy while keeping an equivalent ECC capability. Finally, we summarize our work. In order to adapt the advanced protocol in 3D fast memory, this paper considered the challenge of error variations caused by 3D layer stacked physical structure and data represent rule of protocols. According to this feature, we propose your uh, PC, a novel protocol designed for 3D fast memory. From experimental results, the proposed URPC effectively improved the error correction capability of protocol and made it practically apply to 3D fast memory. And since and since uh, I'm sorry about that, I'm not so familiar with this field. So I hope you can send your question to our email and we will answer it as soon as possible. And uh, thanks and sorry again. So, let's go cool for the exciting presentation, and uh, we have uh, the thanks card and uh, also uh, the best presentation, best paper presentation award for you. So, I'd like to invite Professor Shir to present the certificate and award for, the, for our presenters. Okay, okay. Thank, Thank you so much. much. It's a great honor for our award. Yeah. I first give you the Certification for the presentation. Yes. Okay. And 
the Aaron Dog. And uh, I'm sorry, sorry, so sorry. And uh, this is the uh, best paper of the world for uh, our paper presentation section. Uh, okay, so let's. Congratulations so much. Thank you so much. Okay, congratulations for our best paper. Uh, and the, the next presentation is uh, given by uh, Mr. Jing Hao Wu from Shandong University. Hello, Jing Hao Wu. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, hello. Okay, okay. So, the title of the presentation is PRIP, uh, which partner in using a world proning for uh, IER based P DNS accelerator. And Jing Hao Wu received his BE degree in School of Computer Science and Technology from China University. And, uh, and he is currently pursuing the master degree with the uh, School of Computer Science and Technology at China University. His research interests include the uh, EVM and the uh, computer networks. So Jing Hao, please, uh, please go ahead for your presentation. Okay, you can share your screen. Okay. Um, can I start? Please. Um, it's my great honor to be here to make the presentation. Now I'm going to talk about my paper, PrepPIM, with pattern using a well pruning uh, uh, for a RAM-based PIM-DNA accelerator. Uh, my presentation will be pushed now according to the following four aspects. First, I will introduce the background and the motivation. With the failure of Moore's law and the uh, increasing performance gap between the processor and the memory. The development of system performance has been restricted. It causes two problems. The volume-based architecture are become increasing constrained by memory bandwidth. The memory wall problems and the energy wall problems that transferring data across the memory hierarchy constitutes a large fraction of total energy consumption. VRAM is an emerging non-volatile memory that can perform computation in memory. The RAM sales resistance can be programmed by adding voltage to represent zero or one. To achieve a higher density, RAM sales are usually organized into a crossbar structure that is connected by waterlines and bitlines. In practice, only a, sim only a limited number of waterlines and bitlines can be activated in the same time. Uh, the digital, uh, digital to analog converts is used to, to convert the input feature map data into the voltage signals. Well, the, the current accumulate in each bit lens, uh, send to the shift and add unit, shift, shift and hold unit and fit into the uh, anal analog to digital converts. The values returned by the analog to digital converts is the computation result of the input feature map, input feature map data and the DNN weight filters. The so convolution operation can be seen as matrix vector multiplications, and the number of multiplication times is dependent on the height and the width of feature map. The input vector size is kernel size multiple kernel size multiple input channel. Well, the so width matrix size is for the row is kernel size multiple kernel size multiple input channel, which is as same as the input vector size. Well, for the clone is output channel. It should be noticed that the weights stored in the same row share the same input voltage signals while the results are accumulated in the same clone. 
An example of weight pattern pruning is illustrated in the following picture. For each kernel, a fixed number of weight weights are pruned, as the remaining weights form specific weight patterns. Previous work has shown that uh, the desirable weight pattern, the desirable kernel has a certain weight pattern to match the connection structure in human vision system instead of a square kernel. We make a simple exp experiment and, and find that to, we make a simple experiment that we use the weight pattern pruning method uh, to prune each convolution layer of VJJ16 and find that keeping only four weights for each kernel will not cause a great accuracy loss to the DNA model. Uh, for the weight pattern reusing, uh, we can escape the redundant computations by reusing the computation results. For example, we can uh, reuse the computation result of filter two and skip the computation of filter four. Similarly, we make a simple experiment that we use the weight pattern reusing method to reuse part of weight pattern in each convolution layer of VJJ16 DNA model and find that appropriately reusing part of weight patterns will not cause uh, Great accuracy loss to the DNA model. Then I will introduce my motivation. If we exploit weight pattern sparsity and weight pattern repetition coordinately, there still exist some problems. Uh, for example, if we use if we apply the weight OU low compression and uh, use the weight pattern reusing method at the same time. We may not correctly re reuse the computation results uh, because, uh, for example, after pruning process, the computation results of uh, the, the after pruning process, uh, the input voltage signals of OU1 and OU2 are different, which means the computation result of OU1 and OU2 are different, and we can't reuse the computation result of OU1. If we adopt the weight pattern pruning method and further limit the weight pattern shape numbers, we can make more weight patterns share the same input. On the other hand, if all of the weights in two weight patterns satisfy the same linear relationship, the results still can be reduced after scale up the corresponding coefficient k. For example, in the red picture, uh, the computation of OU3 is twice as large of uh, the computation of OU4. Therefore, we can skip the computation of OU4 by scale up the computation of OU3 to half of the origin. Then I will introduce the prepping design. First, I will introduce the architecture overview of prepping. We add an extra index buffer into the process engine to store the pruning index table and the reuse index table. The working process of prepping is divided into the computing stage and the reusing stage. For the computing stage, at first, we need to read the pruning information from the index buffer. And we need to read the corresponding input data from the input buffer to the input register according to the pruning information. Then we calculate the weight pattern in the computing unit. And finally, we send the computation result to the output buffer. For the reusing stage, we first read the map information and the linear coefficient information from the index buffer. And then we read the output buffer we we read the uh, out, we read the computation result from the output buffer according to the map information and send it to the shift and add unit. It should be noticed that we use the similarity based weight pattern reusing method that the two weight patterns satisfy the same linear relation relationship. That the linear coefficient k is the power of two which means k is might be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on. Uh, and therefore, we can use the shift and add unit to uh, scale up the computation results. And finally, we write back the skilled computation result to the output buffer. Then I will introduce weight pattern using a well-pruning method. 
before the pruning process, we divide off the weed pattern into two groups, the reused weed patterns, which the computation reused, which the computation result can be reused, and the insensitive weed patterns groups whose weight values are relatively small, and the computation process can be skipped. The pruning and reusing process of prepping manually concludes three steps. In the first step, we prune in the insensitive weight pattern according to the reused weight pattern shape candidates. In the second step, we calculate the linear coefficient and scale up the insensitive weight pattern. We use the following equation to calculate the linear coefficient k, where ai is indicates the weight in the reused weight patterns, and bi is indicates the weight in the insensitive weight pattern, and n is the rest weight numbers in each weight pattern. In the third step, we compare the insensitive weight pattern with each reused weight pattern and find the one which has the least discrepancy. Then I will introduce the similarity based weight pattern reusing method. In practice, the weight value range is large even in the same layer of the DNN model, which means the best linear coefficient must not be one. To minimize the weight pattern use impact on model accuracy, we should transform the weight patterns whose weights are relatively small. The best benefit of our, our proposed method is that compared to the identical weight pattern reusing methods, which can only match each weight pattern with a several approximated weight pattern in the same input channel. Our similarity-based weight pattern reusing method can match each weight pattern with all of the other weight pattern in the same input channel, which means we can achieve a high weight pattern reuse ratio. But the pruning index table uh, concludes two sub-tables. Well, the first sub-table stores the index, stores the location index of the rest within each weight pattern. Well, the second sub-table stores the quantity of each kind of weight pattern that has the same shape. To reduce the storage overhead, the weight pattern which has the same shape are stored together. The reusing index table also concludes two sub-tables. Well, the first sub-table stores the map information between the insensitive weight patterns and the reused weight patterns. Well, the second sub-table stores the linear coefficient information between the insensitive weight patterns and the reused weight patterns. Then I will introduce the experimental evaluation. First, our design is simulated by extending the plate for many things. Well, the hardware configuration is manually referred to the two famous RAM DNA accelerator, SRE and ISSAC. Uh, we manually chose four DNN models, VJJ16, ResNet 18, ResNet 50, and, uh, and uh, WRN 18. All of the models are manually, uh, all of the models are trained based on CIFA 10 data site. So for the benchmark selection, we select the uh, SRE, which uses the OU row compression, and the uh, pet pin, which uses the uh, identical weight pattern reusing method and the uh, stru structure pruning method. For the breakdown analysis, we use pet P to indicate the design, which uses the uh, weight pattern pruning method, and pet R to indicate the design, which only uses the similarity based weight pattern pruning method. Pet PIM P to indicate the design which only use stru structure pruning method and pet PIM R to indicate the design that only use 
identical with pattern using method. For the comparison terms, we mainly focus on performance speed up, energy reduction, model accuracy loss. Then I will introduce the training process. We divide the training phase into two stages. In the first stage, we train a semi-finished DNA model and get the pruning information and the reuse information. In the second stage, we add regular Realization terms into the loss function like L2 norm, which aims to make the weight update direction to meet our, our needs. Well, the weight matrix W is the original weight matrix. Well, the weight matrix Z is the ideal weight matrix that strictly satisfy our pruning demand. And the ideal weight matrix R is the weight matrix that is strictly satisfy our reusing demand. Well, the ideal weight matrix Z and R can be uh, obtained by modifying the original weight matrix W according to the pruning information and the reusing information. For the hyperparameter selection, we, the original learning rate is 0 0.1. We decade with the constant annealing for each epoch. Each weight is quantized into eight weights. We reserve eight weight, pat weight pattern shape candidates for each input channel, and we reserve four weights for each weight pattern. We reserve 64, 48, 64, and 96 reused weight patterns for each input channel. For the performance speed up result, our design can achieve 1.0. 91 and 1.64 performance speed up compared to the PET team and SRE respectively. For the, break, for the performance breakdown analyze, PET P achieves 1.46 performance speed up compared to the PET team P. Well, uh, PREP R achieves 1.37 performance speed up compared to the PET team R. For the energy consumption results, our design can achieve one. 0.57 and 1.51 energy reduction compared to the pet PIM and SRE respectively. Well, for the energy consumption breakdown analyzed, PREP P achieves 1.36 energy efficiency improvement compared to the pet PIM P. And the PREP R achieves 1.22 energy efficiency improvement compared to the pet PIM R. For the model accuracy loss results, compared to the pet PIM, our design has a lower model accuracy loss. For the accuracy loss breakdown analyzed, PREP R is lower than that of pet PIM R. Well, PREP P is also lower than that of pet PIM P. Since we put more restrictions on the weight, our design has a higher accuracy loss than SRE. However, com however com consider, consider the performance and the energy efficiency improvements, we think the model accuracy loss is acceptable. Last, I will give some conclusion about this work. We thoroughly analyze the challenges of coordinately exploit Team with sparsity and with pattern repetition for reram based accelerators, and propose a weight pattern reusing aware pruning method. By relaxing weight pattern reusing prediction, we design a similarity based weight pattern reusing method to further achieve a higher weight pattern reusing ratio compared to the state of the art design. We evaluate prepping with several standard DNA models, evaluation results shows that on average, Prepping achieves 1.64 performance improvement and 1.51 energy reduction compared with the state of the artery RAM based in an accelerator. That's all. Thanks for your attention. So, for the exciting presentation, any questions from our audience? This is online or not? Yeah, okay, I have a, a very small question. Uh, the, is, is there any, hey, hello? Can you hear me? Mr. Wu, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Yeah, 
yeah. Do you know is there any some you know products uh, major product major major people the products that uh, that you can use in nowadays? Do you know any the any any products from the industry? Pin devices from the industry. Do you know any 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 of them? Uh, 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 now, uh, now this design is uh, mainly simulated by the uh, simulator, and uh, there is not exist uh, re 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 uh, a product. Okay, okay. So, uh, so, so as I know, there are some demo trips uh, uh, for the film. The pin devices, and maybe in the future we, we will have some of so the, the, the real products for our area. So, so, okay, thanks, thanks, Ms. O, for the presentation. And uh, we also have a thanks, a thanks card for you for your exciting presentation uh, in our workshop. And uh, so, I'd like to invite Professor Schur to present the, 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 the certificate. <laughs> And literally, um, we will transfer the certificate for you. To you. Okay. And thanks. Okay, our uh, next speaker is uh, Professor Hui Sun. Hello, Professor Sun. Are you here? Can you hear me? Yeah, do you hear me? Uh, yeah, 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 clearly. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, so before the presentation, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Professor Sun. Uh, Professor Sun received his uh, PhD, degree, PhD degree from Hwajo University of Science and Technology in 2014. Uh, he's an associate professor of computer science with Anhui University. His, his research interests include computer system, edge computing, performance evaluation, EVM based uh, storage system, file system, and uh, our IOH lectures. And the title of the presentation is that the near data processing enabled the uh, asynchronous parallel scheme for compaction accelerator in QV stores. So let's welcome Professor Sun. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, my presentation is uh, about the near data processing enabled uh, for QV store. Uh, my contents include uh, uh, includes background motivation, design, experience, and our uh, conclusion. First, I will uh, I will introduce the background. KV Store is a popular of the story system for the instruction uh, data in story system. Uh, there are a large scale of instruction data in our uh, in, in our system systems now, such as the website. And the transaction. Uh, the ca character of the key store includes the data structure key value pairs. Value may be image, file, data, website, anymore. Inter interface uh, uh, are put, get, get delayed, and scalable for the large scale unstructured data. Uh, the key store are widely applied in uh, many story and the uh, as the data agent, such as the open source KV store, LibDB, RockDB, Edgin, Castro. Uh, uh, we present the uh, example of the LibDB, uh, a popular implementation of MC3. And the, mm, the destruction in LibDB include the lively secure data at each level. Capacity may increase that, and uh, we uh, we can um, we can conduct the attacking uh, right in KV store. This figure presents the uh, presents the compression processing in LibDB or in S3. Uh, the first level uh, the first level in memory uh, we can see the level uh, and the levels um, C0 and uh, at the level uh, C2 uh, there is uh, SST. As T T uh, it's right. It's well right into the, the next level, uh, but there are many overlapping key range. 
about the SST 222 and 32-33. The new writing date after compaction, uh, we can obtain the SST 234, uh, C34, 35, 36. Uh, we call this processing is compaction, which will cause the high uh, write application. The write application uh, will impair the system performance. Then, uh, and then it degrades the system performance. The compaction or the write application are big issue in TV song. Uh, in this paper, we uh, we designed a new data processing best improvement method for TV stock. New data processing is a new computing framework. It processes data close to the source data in the storage device, such as HDD and SSD. NDP reduces the latency and energy consumption and serving the system's results. NDP is a new method to address the performance problems in compaction for QB stone. Computing results inside the storage device are used to conduct compaction. Uh, this, pro this proceeding can collaborate with the host side, and NDP can reduce the data movement cost in compaction. There is uh, our previous work about NDP enable QB stop. Uh, we name we named it T stop a popular NDP QB stop now. Use the NDP architecture to access the compassion performance. But in T stop, it can it's partition compression task and overloading to the host and device. The host and the device collaborate to conduct the command task that's on the compaction performance and the synchronization mode. Uh, it means uh, when the host completes the compaction proceeding, uh, proceed, proceed CPU, the, the wait, it must be, it must wait for, wait for the, the device side. When the host and the device side all complete, completes the compaction, uh, the, uh, the, the, all the progress for the conduction. t stop outperforms the uh, level DB, but conduction is queue time is different by the lowest performance side, such as the, the cost device may be, uh, may be high, may, may have higher, higher performance than the storage device. It's a challenge to balance the overhead on both sides in NDP enabled QB stop. Therefore, we decided a new NDP enabled QB stop. Uh, we, we referred to it as uh, P stop. P stop feature includes multi task queue. It can store, store in compact task and uh, three level priority scaling scheme. Uh, the thread level priority can offload command tasks to both the host and the device in the asynchronous model. Uh, in a compaction, in compaction, in command processing, there are two sub sub process, um, include, including trigger and do. In LabDB, compaction trigger and the and the execution mechanism are conducted at the synchronization model. The synchronization model blocks the current compaction task, such as the synchronous and the asynchronous, asynchronous uh, different model. To design a synchronous a synchronous model in PSO, we need to define the parameter. One is scored trigger. Which is me, which is used to trigger a combustion proceeding. Scott do the matrix is used is used to perform a compaction proceeding. We analyze the two matrix and and mm -hmm. redefine the, the threshold for the two matrix to contraction to trigger and conduct 
the connection in a, in a asynchronous model. So we will bring the three priority into cell. One is the priority selection or trigger connection. Of course, the right side trigger connection according to the scope trigger. That is the max the maximum value at each level. Then it process the connected task information. Uh, the information primary primaries include includes the metadata for SS tables involved in the connection. And place it in the task. Concerning the scope, it also the maximum value at each level. Among the tasks to create, but the work, comparison tasks are performed in a queue. Second, overlapping compatible as a table aware of the priority. To do this priority, we first observe the metadata of the S table that have overlapping pH and each level in the asynchronous order. Second, we will select the S table from the sorted list. Let us keep the table involved in it. Hello, Professor. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Do you hear me? Think, yeah. Could you please uh, be close to your mic since the voice uh, from the online meeting is uh, not so clear? Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay now. It's okay. Right there. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, there are the, the priority to compaction task. Compaction task at each level has a double end priority task queen, and the compaction task are sorted in the same order according to the number of the table involved in compaction. The house conduct compaction task from the left side of the screen with a smaller number of the table. Uh, in contrast, the device call, the device chose the task from the right side with the many as table. Next, uh, we conduct our experiment in a realistic uh, house and a device, which is defined, which is computer, computer as NDB device. In the test bed, uh, we can see the device uh, on the on the platform, uh, there is a story media DRAM NDP processor. Pro uh, pro uh, processor is uh, is based on the RK three three nine nine. The work uh, work load in our test includes two events and one CSB one CSB and. Uh, uh, in, in DB bench, in DB bench, compared with the live DB, P start redu re reduce the right application by 75 percent. Compared with the T star, T star slightly increases double. This is because T star merely conducts a portion of the compatible task, and in T star there are uh, a slight increase in uh, increments in the red data. Uh, under different under workload with different data volume and uh, value size, uh, we compare with the TSA and the LDB. TSA improved the throughput by uh, 2.09 and uh, 14 improvement with every and 1.73 and 10.52. In the YSSB, uh, we study the performance of the of T star on the workload with a variety of data volume and a variety of record size. First, with the one one kilobit byte uh, record size, compared with the T star and the level DB, P star reduced the radar latency by forty five percent and eighty nine percent. The companion data becomes more with the data volumes in the workload, consume the amount of the bandwidth and the impaired performance. 
and uh, uh, when when uh, when we use uh, the same size data volume and the variety size record, we can obtain the with the same data volume, large size records cause the higher overhead in compaction and the transfer data increased. With the large size key pair, data processed on the host increased and our latency rise again. Conclusion: A, a similar uh, scalar parallel compaction measures uh, mechanisms uh, uh, is developed in our NDB PSTOR, and we name this we name this uh, PSTOR. Compared with the extended parallel compaction model NDP based PSTOR, PSTOR can fully use the, the computing results and uh, both side both host and the device side thread through thread priority scaling the scheme. Compared with the TSA and the LVDB, TSA improved the throughput, uh, compared um, throughput by 2.09 and uh, averaged the uh, 1.73. Okay, thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, Professor Sun. Uh, so, any questions from our audience? Our online audience can straightforwardly unmute yourself to ask questions. If you have questions. Okay, Professor Sun, I have a, a very simple question for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in the priority based scheduling, so is the latency of the low priority uh, compression task uh, will be increased significantly? Uh, it means the, the latency between the host and the device. Yeah, 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 of the low priority task. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in this, in, in our test bed, uh, we use the Ethernet between the host and the device. And it may have uh, have a latency uh, because the interface between the host and the device. But in the uh, because the um, the, the rarely NDP NDP device uh, such as PCIe SATA uh, three uh, best the device we 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 cannot get get the device uh, so we use the, the Ethernet uh, as the as the transfer path between the house and device it may cause the, some latency. Okay, okay, understood. Thanks, thanks, uh, Professor. Okay. Sun. okay. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we also have a okay. thanks card for you. And uh, I also want <laughs> to invite our hotel our, to present the bid for you. And uh, literally, uh, we will transfer this uh, to you. Okay, okay. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I cannot attend the, 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 uh, the conference and local. I'm sorry, <laughs> Professor Shi. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Professor. Okay, we will move to our last presentation uh, by Mr. Jia Le Cui. Hey, Mr. Cui, are you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so the next presentation is uh, hardware security implementation using uh, materialistic uh, RAMIS treaty properties. Uh, and the, the speaker is Jala Sun. Jala Sui received the bachelor degree from Hofei University in Nanjing, China. And he's currently working for the master degree in electronic engineering at the National ASIC Center, School of Electronic Science and Engineering, Southeast University. Uh, his research interests include the uh, in memory computing, uh, two random number generator, and the uh, his take uh, computing that has won the third world prize of uh, uh, integrated circuit EVA edit challenge and the exciting student paper of uh, 2021 IEEE uh, for uh, 14th International Conference on AC. So please start your presentation, Mr. Tsui. Okay, thanks, introduction. Uh, good morning, my name is Sui Jiado. Uh, it's my pleasure to give an introduction about, about our work regarding the hardware security implementation using magnetic resistive RAM intrinsic properties. 
first let's talk about uh, uh, hardware security on IoT devices. IoT is really everywhere, uh, whether it's in retail, energy, smart home, or transportation. There is pretty much uh, there is pretty much no one that that uh, doesn't want to use uh, uh, IoT devices anymore. Uh, we use these devices every day and uh, allow them to access our uh, privacy information. Therefore, uh, hardware security is critical for developing a secure IoT ecosystem. Uh, from this pyramid of pain, we can see that the cyber attack has uh, the greatest impact on computing platforms such as ARM-based uh, SOC or FPJ. The hardware uh, attacks can be classified as side channel attacks, uh, black box attack, and other types of threats. In recent years, uh, the hardware threats exploit the vulnerability of hardware size and seek greater control. To protect the privacy information, the security primitives play an important role in the security of integrated, integrated chips. Uh, a physical entity should uh, provide a secure platform that can resist hardware attack. Uh, security primitives have two main sources, conventional and uh, nanoscale based uh, hardware security primitives. Uh, conventional hardware security primitive uh, usually rely on CMOS technology and uh, it has limited randomness and large energy consumption. Uh, for edge devices, Nanoscale based hardware security primitive uh, is energy efficient and uh, it can offer excellent uh, physical randomness. Next, I will give some preliminaries about this work. Uh, the magnetic tunnel junction is a basic storage cell of MRAM. Uh, it has three layers a uh, free layer, oxide layer, and a pin layer. Uh, we, uh, the resistance state can be changed by applying a current. Uh, STM RAM has some features such as uh, non volatile, uh, compatible with CMOS technology, uh, low energy consumption, and uh, high endurance, so that the MRAM is the most prom promising candidate to serve as a, a universal memory. Uh, the STM RAM macro uh, usually consists of uh, sensing amplifiers, uh, decoders, and uh, red drivers. Uh, we can make some modification uh, of the circuits to implement the uh, security primitive. Uh, some features of MRAM can be exploited uh, for memory, and uh, there are also some special features that can be exploited for security, such as process variations, uh, stochastic switching, and chaotic magnetization. The first hardware security primitive is true random, true random number generator. TRNG is defined as a device that generates unpredictable and unbiased random numbers independent of software algorithms. When we, uh, when we evaluate the performance of TRNG, uh, we can use, uh, there are four metrics, uh, energy efficiency, randomness, throughput, and uh, design simplicity. Uh, we investigate several methods to implement uh, MRAM-based TRNG. The first is correction block. It has a probability tracking unit to guarantee 50% uh, switching probability. Uh, the second is uh, symmetric MTGs, which execute a red option uh, to a serial connected MTG. And we can, we can also use a generator with a high frequency counter. And, and the post-processing uh, is an uh, important method for TRNG. Uh, you can use exclusive all gates uh, to improve the quality of randomness. The last method is differential scheme. We can compare the charge difference between uh, two consecutive cycles. 
And the second uh, uh, hardware security primitive is physical and combo function. Uh, a path can translate a challenge into a response through a system that is specific to uh, in instance and uh, that can now be replicated. Uh, there are three uh, main uh, performance metrics of path. Uniformity, uh, inter hamming distance, and uh, uh, reliability. A path can be classified into three types, uh, weak path, uh, strong path, and uh, reconfigurable path. Uh, the weak path has limited CRPs and uh, it is really, uh, and uh, it, it is uh, uh, linear dependent on the uh, challenge. Uh, on the contrary, the strong path has a very large number of CRPs and, uh, it, it, and uh, so that it is, can, uh, it is resilient to model building attacks. And the uh, uh, reconfigurable path uh, is a notable text that it can change uh, change the response to the same challenge through circuit design. In this section, uh, we present a STDM RAM based uh, TRNG with linear character. Uh, stochast the stochastic, stochastic switching is a uh, intrinsic property of STDM RAM. It can be expressed as the following equations. Uh, from the left figure, we can see that the switching probability depends on uh, current amplitude and uh, pulse width. And the right figure shows the uh, stochastic switching probability uh, prop, uh, property um, simulated by Monte Carlo simulations. And our our proposed TRNG uh, has two modules, including a uh, randomness extraction module and the uh, post-processing module. Uh, the raw data is read out by extraction module and uh, fed into post-processing module to improve the quality of randomness. Uh, from the red figure, uh, we can see uh, there are three, uh, three phases for generating one random bit. The first is a reset phase. Um, a sufficient reset current is uh, is applied to MTJ with direction from uh, the free layer to pin layer. Uh, during red phase, a red current is applied to MTJ with a direction from uh, from pin layer to a free layer uh, with appropriate uh, parameters of transistors. Uh, we can. Uh, we can we can obtain fifty percent switching probability. Uh, after red phase, uh, the state of MTJ is read out by sensing amplifiers uh, as a random bit. Uh, this table shows the parameters and the variables you uh, you used in our simulation. Uh, we perform simulation using 40 nanometer CMOS technology and the MTJ contact model. And we obtain 15% switching probability. Uh, the operation frequency of the proposed uh, TRNG is 100 me megahertz. And uh, the reset phase for 5 nanoseconds, read and the uh, read phase is for 2.5 nanoseconds. This table shows the uh, NIST test uh, result on raw data. Uh, we can see that the pass rate proportion of raw data is poor and uh, is decreasing with data size. Uh, so we need to uh, design a, a post-processing a, a post method. As conventional post-processing methods, uh, the exclusive OR gate is inefficient in diversity, and the volume method has low throughput. Uh, from the right figure, uh, some researchers some researchers propose a new function that can extract more entropy than the 
standard exclusive OR gate. This function comprises 16 bits to 8 bits, and it can be implemented by left shift and uh, exclusive OR gates. And this table shows a uh, performance of three different characters. And we can see a good linear code uh, has, has a high rate and uh, good debiasing. Mm, the BCH code can be expressed as uh, the polynomial form. Uh, we can and we can implement this BCH code uh, using exclusive OR gate and the shift register. Uh, the schematic of the two circuits is shown on the red right top figure. Uh, in the in the first nine cycles, uh, the input bits is uh, are shifted into the shift register one. Uh, in the next uh, 256 cycles, uh, the, um, uh, the, op the output base are produced by exclusive all gates and, uh, and fed into the shift register two. Uh, so uh, so uh, a total of 256 registers and the four exclusive all gates are required to implement this BCH code. Uh, we will run the NST test, uh, test using uh, the processed data. Uh, the pass rate has a significant improvement after linear correcting uh, processing. Uh, from the red figure, uh, we can see that the proposed TRNG has a stable pass rate uh, for different lengths of sequences. And we also uh, analyze the process variation awareness of the proposed TRNG. Uh, the red figure shows the NST test results uh, of bit stream generated from TRNG before and after a linear character. We can see that the uh, the raw data is easily weakened uh, by process variations, while the, uh, the randomness of processed data is significantly enhanced. And this table shows the uh, performance comparison of existing uh, STM RAM based uh, TRNG. Uh, we can see that our proposed scheme uh, it has less hardware uh, overhead and uh, it is energy efficient. And it also robust to process variation attacks uh, without any degradation of randomness. For the second uh, security printing, we implement a uh, uh, we implement uh, MRAM based path. Uh, we replace conventional tantalum with atom thick tungsten layer uh, for larger, and we get a larger TMR ratio owing to efficient tunneling transmissions. Uh, the, red, the red figure shows the, uh, shows the resist, re resistance distribution of 256 bits of. Uh, uh, we can see that the RP and the RAP has uh, have large uh, large distribution large distribution due to the process variation. Uh, while only uh, only part of cells can uh, can be uh, can be selected uh, to implement the MRAM based path. The red line is for RP and the blue line is RAP. Uh, the proposed MRAM based path has three operation modes. Erase is a mandatory mode. In this mode, an uh, extremely high current is applied to MTJ to initial state. In read mode, a uh, challenge is generated uh, by selecting two groups of, M uh, of, of cells. And uh, these two groups are compared to uh, generate a response. Uh, for programming um, mode, the magnetization of the free layer 
can be configured can, can be configured by a uh, current so that uh, the same in, the same instance has different uh, response for the same challenge uh, the left figure uh, the main performance uh, characters are shown in are showing the left are showing the left figure um, the proposed uh, uh, the inter hamming distance is 49.87 percent and the the, the, the intro hamming distance is close to zero and we get 15 percent uniformity from the red figure a uh, we can see that the uh, switching probability uh, is a function of current amplitude so that a path can be reconfigured reconfigured by a, a programming current and the programmed pattern um, is different from the left and pattern for the same challenges and the uh, figure c uh, demonstrates the uh, programmed uh, path inter and intra hemi distance are uh, around the ideal value. Uh, the last figure shows that the reliability uh, the reliability is highly dependent uh, on switching on switching current, uh, and we can also and we can choose the dashed line circle as proper switching probability uh, switching current. Uh, this table shows the performance comparison uh, of existing of existing MRAM based path. Uh, our implemented path uh, with ring configurability is verified to be appropriate for authentication. Finally, let's conclude our work. Uh, we present a survey of potential circuit designs for STMRAM based TRNG. Uh, and uh, uh, path. Uh, a std MRAM based TRNG with linear correcting code is designed to achieve a um, good trade off between throughput and the randomness. And finally, we implement a MRAM based path uh, by utilizing the process variation of modified std MRAM bit cell. That's all. Thanks for your listening. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Mr. Tui, for the excellent presentation. So the TRNG problem is very interesting problem. So, uh, is there any audience have questions online and offline? So, actually, I have a question about the TRNG problem, uh, Mr. Okay. So, uh, so this is, I'm not very familiar with this problem, and I, I just know it is very interesting. So as mm -hmm. a, we use software, it's, it's very hard or nearly impossible to generate a true random number. So yes. how to evaluate whether a number is a really is a really random number or true random number? So during the evaluation, so please give um give us some uh, an introduction about some things. Uh, oh, oh, okay, uh, a true random number is uh, a, a sequence that has 15% uh, for one and 15% uh, for zero. Uh, a, a, a true TRNG uh, uh, is, uh, is can, uh, can produce this sequence. And uh, the randomness is also a performance metric uh, for uh, for for evaluating the TRNG uh, quality. Okay, okay, understood. Got it. Okay. Thanks for uh, Mr. Tsui, and uh, we also okay. have uh, thanks Carl for you for your excellent presentation. And uh, I would like to invite uh, Professor Shi to present the thanks Carl. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Sweet, I think uh, you can you can you can you can share your yeah. slides. The first uh, slides and your camera. We can take okay. a photo here. Good.
Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the question. Okay, so later we will transfer the transfer transfer to you. Okay, thank okay. you. So this is the end of our today's session, and uh, thanks for our for all the presenters and the, all the audience in the online and offline. So uh, thanks all, and uh, so bye bye. So any other comment? Okay, okay, thanks. <laughs>